Um, both my sweetheart's flights a couple of days ago and mine were cancelled. There was some atmospheric rivers, massive flooding and lots of suburbs within New Zealand were kind of like waist deep in water. Come to the southern hemisphere, they said. It'll be warm and sunny, they said. First New Zealand and Australia, what's going on? Hi everybody, it has been five years since I was back in Melbourne. When I left, I had a two year working visa to Canada. I just assumed that I'd be back. I'm having feels about seeing all of my old life in boxes and in a garage wrapped up. And now I have to get rid of it all. Hi, my name is Flossie. I'm a bi-hemispherical traveler. Living in British Columbia, Canada, in my home-built van, my tiny home on wheels. I'm back in New Zealand right now, traveling the length of the country in a van. And I'm excited to share with you this magical, subtropical country where I was born. Finally, the very last leg of the journey. And we headed for another longer drive all the way down through these small towns, alongside the ocean again, to Christchurch. Final destination on New Zealand. That end is this New Zealand leg of the journey. I have been at the airport for the last two hours. Um, both my sweetheart's flights a couple of days ago and mine, mine to Melbourne, were cancelled. Um, there's been weather in Christchurch and weather in Auckland and if I will insert some news clips here, the Auckland weather, they had a state of emergency, crazy flooding and it's just been insane. So the airports have been an absolutely diabolical mess. So much chaos. And so instead of going to Melbourne today, I get to stay here in dreary Christchurch for another couple of days and probably rest and sleep. But this was not expected. I'm not happy about it. Luckily, it has interrupted, it hasn't interrupted too many of my plans, but. great expectations of my trip to New Zealand being all gorgeous summer weather but in fact it is a subtropical place and as weather patterns and climate changes continue to shift we had a lot of unexpected weather to face. Two extra days in Christchurch visiting with family really wasn't something to complain about. Yes, it was a disruption to plans and delayed my getting to Melbourne to deal with my storage unit, but really, it wasn't the end of the world, as disappointing as it was. I've been really interested in brewing, fermenting, and making wines and spirits, having dabbled in mead and cider making myself. So this surprise visit to the white wine region in New Zealand and having our personalized tour was just a treat. Wine making even on this quote unquote small scale is quite an endeavor. This winery I can definitely vouch for its deliciousness and I've included the website to Torless Wines in the description so you can check them out. Oh, these are all the barrels of port. Thank you. 
I think one of the highlights of this trip is getting to meet and catch up with all the littlies of the next generation. They were fascinated by the drone. It's this pure, unadulterated joy of children what makes you forget the troubles of the world. For a moment you're sucked in to their small but thrilling universe that they exist in. Without any of the larger cares or worries of the world, yet within their realms of realization. When I was a kid, we used to come to places like this and be part of the historical reenactment group. I loved coming here and dressing up in period costume and we'd sit by the fire and cross stitch or make, his, or make scrap uh, fabric rugs. And yeah, I love this place, it's so cool. I had a dress that was very much like this one. A little corset underneath. This one here is a bigger cottage. This is what a Maori fortification would have looked like. Pa, prior to colonialism coming in and decimating and destroying everything, they always built on mounds on tall, tall top of small hills, fortified their inner sanctuary, and then had armory stuff all over like such a cute little miniature village. Can you see it on the sides? And then farmed, they farmed a lot, and grew kumra, which is a type of New Zealand sweet potato. Here are your canoes and fishing. Hey, spot something that Flossie's a fan of? Nettles! Yum, 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 yum. Tasty. Almost. I really want to build me one of these in my outdoor kitchen at some point when I get off grid land and I'll probably have one of these too. You know what one of those is? The John, the long drop, the Danny. I remember this place on reenactment days. We'd always have somebody here selling goods and you'd be sent down to the store when we were doing reenactments to come and get bits and pieces. Soaps and butters and sugar and flour. So many memories here sitting at our desks with our slates doing our lessons, their ink inkwells. Learning our cursive letters. Inside the ship would have looked like this. This would have been your bunk. The ships that brought colonial folk to the lands of Aotearoa. <laughs> I was like, Tiaroa? doesn't say cancelled. Yay! So New Zealand has had some crazy, crazy weather. When we first arrived, there was some atmospheric rivers, massive flooding, and lots of suburbs within New Zealand were kind of like waist deep in water, which is so much damage. Landslides, the whole lot. Um, we managed to get out of Auckland 
before too much of that happened and start traveling further down the island. Um, and then when we came to fly out, all the flights were canceled, we couldn't get out. And then when I went to fly back, my flights were canceled yet again. And that was because there's a cyclone heading towards Auckland. So poor Auckland has been hit by weather after weather after weather. And hopefully now, three days later, it's fine. Things of the airport is back open. And then Wellington was hit with an earthquake. Like, holy moly. Well, Wellington, the North Island anyway. 0.6 on the Richter scale, which is quite a big and long one. So, pretty scary times. I made it. Now, on my own, without our van. Having dropped off the rental van, the caravan, our wee RV, home on wheels, I was finally, finally off to Melbourne. Yep, this is the next chapter of this epic adventure. Five years ago, and a bit more. I used to live here. I left New Zealand in 2013 and moved over the Tasman Sea to Melbourne. Such a big, big city compared to what I was used to in Auckland. But that's what it was and that's what I was into at the time. Look, I made it to Melbourne. Holy moly, I'm in the city. Um, I'm at my friend's apartment, which is on a nice upper floor. And I'm here, hello! I am quite tired and am now connected to much better internet. I've had really crappy internet for a while, so I'm about to catch up on a whole lot of stuff and do more posts and get back on the internet and do more stuff for you Patreons because I know I've been a bit slack lately, so thanks for your patience with me. Here we are. You'll Everybody. It has been five years since I was back in Melbourne and when I left I had a two-year working visa to Canada. I just assumed that I'd be back. I assumed I'd go over there for a couple of years and then come back. And that has not been the case. I've fallen in love with BC. Storage Unit 77. Wow. All the bits and pieces of my life that have been in here for five years. Most of my precious stuff is all in a box. Down there. Underneath here, I have a beautiful chaise lounge that I found on the side of the road and upholstered. Books, costumes, coffee table, side table, fridges, bed furniture this was my life and now i have a new life i'm saying goodbye it feels weird it feels really weird oh. <sighs> to be in here half packed up half unpacked i can't even get those boxes out like it's just too difficult they're buried in the back corner <sighs> behind things like this fridge which I can't move by myself a couple of things gotten broken but I'm going to take all of this small stuff that I could access to thrift stores and refuges to give it away and then I've put some ads on some swap and sell pages to get rid of the rest of the furniture hopefully that's easeful at least I have a week more to do it. If I need to take a run to the dump, I can do that next weekend. This coming weekend, my, my best friend Amy and I are going away to the Mornington Peninsula, to the beach, to the ocean. And hopefully I'll get to show you it. The weather at the moment is pissing with rain because it seems like I've bought a bit of winter in BC with me everywhere I go. 
the atmospheric rivers can stay. I don't want them here. Anyway, time lapse is going. Everything's in the car. Let's go to the thrift store. Yay. I could probably take some of the stuff out, but it would just be such a big effort and the t car is tiny. Oh, now I'm thinking I should try. No, I think it's too much. I think it's too much. But I've got some of it out, which is really good. I'm just not as strong as I used to be with my shoulder. So lifting stuff up from the bottom up and over this pile up five feet and then down again is a bit too much for my shoulder. I'm gonna get it out on Monday, it's not long. Okay. This company does taxi boxes. So all of these things get delivered to somebody's house. You fill it up, they pick it up, take it away, put it in this storage facility and then you can come pick it up. So I have already started and my attempt is to put as much stuff in here, some of it to get rid of, some of it to keep, some of it to give away. Today. And then on Monday, it'll get delivered to my friend's place, but there'll be less junk in here. So all will be just, just the big stuff that I've already started getting ready to get rid of. Come to the Southern Hemisphere, they said. It'll be warm and sunny, they said. New Zealand and Australia, what's going on? Right, wish me luck. I've got the, the moving truck that's delivering my storage unit box here to drop off stuff to squish into this garage unit. Getting there. Getting there. Getting there. Unpacking storage unit is never fun. There's a lot more stuff in there than I thought, and also a lot less at the same time. Now I've got to try and get rid of it all. I'm having feels about seeing all of my old life in boxes and in a garage wrapped up. And now I have to get rid of it all. This is what I really want. These are the stuff that I'm trying to track back to Melbourne. I don't know what's inside of it, and I gotta find out. It's like an unboxing. Candlesticks. Deep in here is pink pots. I have a whole pot with it. Glasses. Trophies from dancing. This kind of stuff. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to keep any of this. Right, it's an end of a chapter. But I have got a whole lot of things that I'm going to take with me. As you can tell, super into pink at one point in time. That has now been replaced by yellow and orange. Box are unpacked, stuff's been going in there. Figuring things out to do, next job is to list some of these big items online. Because I need to get rid of them and hopefully they can find a good home. Um, some of the donation places I've called up um, have taken a few things. But some of the big stuff still needs homes. We're working on it. unit is finished, the fridge has been picked up, the coffee table is gone, the nightstand is gone, my back boxes are unpacked. <sighs> what a relief. Having a friend's help to share her garage with me has made such a massive difference. I get to leave the queen bed there, the chaise lounge, I feel like I've also just had two 
people on Facebook Marketplace try and scam me out of it, which is not great. <sighs> Yesterday was so cloudy, there was no sunset at all. Today we have a little sunset. It's very weird, this being in the city thing. I used to live here. I lived here for five years. I lived that direction. I don't miss it. I miss the people. I miss my very, very dear friends who I'm all getting to catch up with. I don't miss the city. Not one teeny bit. I miss the trees. <sighs> I'm gonna need to hug messes of trees when I get home. We'll get there. This is depressing. This poor computer is really struggling. <laughs> I bet you didn't think I would end up in a van build during this trip. And here we are in one of my friends in Australia's bus and they're currently ripping up all the whole plywood floor getting proper access to figuring out what's what like what are those anyone know what those are are they brake gas compressor air brakes or i don't i don't know um anyway so far she's doing an amazing job of insulating everything with this Freaking cool, squishy insulation stuff. But yeah, van life here in Melbourne. All the wood has got to come up on each of these to get the picture. That's what I'm doing to help out for a couple of hours you know if you're building something by yourself and you haven't built anything from before all the help matters help your friends out yeah <laughs> hi everybody this is my friend hi i'm sarah seahorse and you can find her on instagram Are you what about you? Them. <laughs> We're funny. <laughs> I can stay. Yeah. Um, and you should follow along on the Instagram for the um, van build. Actually, it's a bus. Her name's Piglet. Piglet! And she's a Mercedes school bus. That's so cool. And Piglet, because we've both got vehicles with short noses. Totally. <laughs> and it's going to be a colourful wonderland in here when we finish. Oh my gosh. I am so excited <laughs> to watch you and see how it goes. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me over. Pleasure. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Remember Octohat? Well, meet Octohat the second. Look at this beauty. This hat could be yours. All you need to do to enter to win this is make sure you subscribe to the channel and there's a link down below in the description to subscribe to my newsletter. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanna let you know that I'll be pulling the draw for the Apto hat next week. I will be announcing the winner in next week's video. So this is literally your last chance for this hat to be yours. I'm also posting some footage of New Zealand that's not gonna be on my main channel. Pop over to my Patreon and you can join us there for as little as a few bucks a month. It really, really helps me out. Especially as now I'm actually unemployed. <sighs> You'll be helping me out a ton. A huge thank you to all of you already out there who support and encourage me, it means a lot. I'll see you next Friday with more from Australia before I head back to the Northern Hemisphere to Canada and, 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 hint, hint, to the USA. Bye. It's my little home in the desert and it's about to get real cold. <laughs>